that is to get married. And there's plenty of disabled men who get married who provide for their families and they marry able-bodied women. There's a less number of um, disabled women who get married to able-bodied men. But there are some exceptions, one of which is Soria, a young woman that they interviewed. And her story is that she was a disabled woman who volunteered at the association and then who also had a paying job. And she married an able-bodied man, but he was unemployed. And so when they got married, he wanted her to quit her volunteer job, only have her paying job, and then he wasn't going to work. And so, in a sense, she became caretaker, nurse, provider for him. She didn't fill the wife role. It wasn't a wife, a partner. It was She was the caretaker. And so if disabled women in the Middle East do get married, that is what it tends to become, is they actually end up becoming a caretaker to the man. Um, it's not the same for men. Men usually get married to able-bodied women, and it's a normal relationship. I'm sure there's exceptions, but in the book, they emphasize how it's just very rare for a disabled woman to find a marriage, and if she does, it's not necessarily a good one. Um, so after that, they talked about the aspirations that the women had and what they wanted from their lives. And, you know, like I said, in, in the Middle East and that culture, typically it is to get married, to have a family. Um, but they didn't want that. They wanted to be financially independent. They wanted to be able to help their families. And so that made me wonder, why is that? Like, why is that their, their aspiration? It's a good one. Why, why, why do I think they see that? And the book didn't say this, but one of it could be maybe they don't want to be a burden. Maybe they feel like a burden on their family. Maybe they want to be able to make money to give back. But one of what I think personally is, that it could also be this is a sense of freedom. You know, they might not be able to have that freedom as an able-bodied woman because they would be definitely in a marriage, definitely with a family. They wouldn't be able to leave the house to be financially independent, to have a job, to make their own decisions for their lives. So it's a double discrimination, but it could also be maybe an advantage that, you know, I'm able to be financially independent where I never would have been that way had I been able-bodied, which is how a lot of the women look at it. Um, but that's not always the case. It's definitely you know, a uphill battle for them. And there's a discrimination, no doubt, between disabled men and disabled women. Um, I think that it's important that we recognize that and that that's how you tackle issues is not just disabled that's all around. how you tackle issues is not just disabled all around. It's how is this affecting that person as an individual in their specific circumstance? One of the quotes from the book that really talks about this and kind of explains how the association... Um, wants to handle this in Lebanon is that we need to be more knowledgeable about the ways in which sex discrimination manifests itself in our communities and how it is further exasperated by disability to the point that any family investment in a blind woman appears to be pointless. So that's what this association, the Youth Association for the Blind in Lebanon, that's what they want to do is to address the issue of sex discrimination and then, you know, that comes the disability discrimination as well, because even if she was able-bodied, she would still have an uphill battle to climb, um, just because of what she was born as, just because of that she's a woman. So I think that kind of answers the question of, do we need to take gender into account when discussing this disability? Yes, it's important. It kind of makes for a different story. Um, and there is, it is a different life. It was very interesting to read this book and kind of see the perspective of not only a disabled person, but a disabled woman. I'm a woman just to see the difference.